فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان لا يوم الدين ما بعد وإن شاء الله حفظ كتاب التبيان في أداب حملة القرآن رتن باية الإمام النووي رحمه الله تعالى الباب السادس في أداب القراءة وهو معظم الكتاب ومقصوده هذا الباب هو هو مقصود الكتاب وهو من وهو منتشر جدا وأنا أشير إلى طراف من مقاصده كراهة الاطلاع كراهة كراهة الإطالة وخوفا على قارئه من الملالة فأول ذلك أنه يجب على القارئ الإخلاص كما قدمناه ومراعاة الأدب مع القرآن فينبغي أن يستحضر في نفسه أنه يناجي الله تعالى ويقرأ ويقرأ على حال من يرى الله تعالى فإنه إن لم يكن يراه فإن الله تعالى يراه نعم Those brothers are here if you can just move towards the left Those brothers are here If you can more of you just move towards this side because sisters might come through So Ibrahim, yes, it's over there. Chapter 6, Manners Required During Recitation. This chapter is the main purpose of the book and is therefore quite long. So this, the author now is going to go into the fifth, uh, sorry, the sixth chapter. And as he said, uh, Rahimahullah, this is going to be about the etiquettes of reciting. And this is the biggest part and the longest a portion of the book and it's the intent of why the book was authored. So the fifth and the sixth chapters are really the, the reason why he authored this book. Now, I will, however, point out that which is particularly important so as to avoid making it too long and hence avoid boring the reader. So here the author says, and وَأَنَا أُشِيرُ إِلَىٰ أَطْرَافٍ مِنْ مَقَاصِدِهِ What I'm going to try to do, inshallah ta'ala, is I'm going to mention the intended. I don't know, I do dislike karaha I just want to, I want to stay away from speaking too long and being lengthy. And fear that I might I might make the individual who's reading get tired and bored. وَخَوْفًا عَلَىٰ قَارِئِهِ مِنَ الْمَلَالَةِ Malala means boredom. The person will feel bored and feel uh, yeah, bored basically. He won't be able to carry on reading. So, I'll, because of that, I won't make it long. The first, one, the first of these points is that it is necessary for the reciter to be sincere in his intention in reciting, as has been mentioned before. So, the first thing that he says that is needed is ikhlas. And we always say that ikhlas means ikhlasuna, ikhlasuna lillahi safi al-qalba min iradatin siwahu fahdhar ya fatin. That the person he purifies from his actions any purpose and any objective other than Allah. Now, and to behave appropriately towards the Quran. The second thing he mentions is wa muraatul adabi ma'al Quran, and that the person observes manners when reading the Quran. This chapter is going to speak about that. What manners that a person needs to observe when reading the Quran. Now. He should be aware that he is talking to his Lord and recites as though he can see Allah. But even if he cannot see him, Allah sees the reciter. So again, the reciter is that in his heart he feels that he is having a dialogue with his Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he should also read like a person who can see who Allah, or he can see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you can't see Allah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can he can see you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The reciter should clean his mouth using siwaq. The author then says, فَصْلٌ فِي اسْتِحْبَابِ السِّوَاكِ لِقِرَاءَةِ الْقُرْآنِ وَيَنْبَغِي إِذَا أَرَادَ الْقِرَاءَةَ أَنْ يُنَظِّفَ فَمَهُ بِالسِّوَاكِ وَغَيْرِهِ وَالِاخْتِيَارُ فِي السِّوَاكِ أَنْ يَكُونَ بِعُودٍ مِنْ أَرَاكِ 
ويجوز بسائر العيدان وبكل ما ينظف كالخرقة الخشنة والإشنان والأشنان وغير ذلك وفي حصوله بالإصبع الخشنة ثلاثة أوجه لأصحاب الشافعي رحمه الله أشهرها أنه لا يحصل والثاني يحصل والثالث يحصل إن لم يجد غيرها ولا يحصل إن وجد ويستاك عرضا مبتدئا بالجانب الأيمن من فمي وينوي به لتيان بالسنة قال بعض العلماء يقول عند السواك اللهم رب اللهم بارك لي فيه يا أرحم الراحمين قال المرداوي من أصحاب الشافعي يستحب أن يستاك في ظاهر الأسنان وباطنها وباطنها ويمر السواك ويمر السواك على أطراف أسنانه وكراسي أطراسه وسقف حلقه إمرارا رفيقا قالوا وينبغي أن يستاك بعود متوسط لا شديد اليبوسة ولا شديد الربوة ولا شديد الرطوبة فإن اشتد, فإن اشتد يبسه لينه بالماء ولا بأس باستعمال سواك غير ذا ولا بأس باستعمال سواك غيره بإذنه وأما إذا كان فمه نجسا بدم, بدم أو غيره فإنه يكره له قراءة القرآن قبل غسله وهل تحرم قال, الرو... قال الرياني من أصحاب الشافعي رضي الله عنه عن والده يحتمل وجهين The reciter should clean his mouth using siwak, also called miswak, or anything else before reciting. So here the author speaks about that it's recommended to use miswak, to use a miswak before you recite the Quran and you clean your mouth. He talks about that now, specifically using a siwak. Hiya. And it is preferred that the siwak be from the Arak tree. So now, what type of siwak is the best? It's the Arak. It's from the tree of Arak. And it would have been better if we bought different siwaks and showed you guys which one it is. It is permissible to use any other kind of stick used for cleaning or anything else that can be used to clean the mouth, like a rough cloth. So the person can use anything else can be used. For example, a person can use now toothbrushes, okay, and anything else it can be used. It doesn't matter. It can. It doesn't have to be necessarily a siwak. Hey, yeah. With regards to the reciter cleaning his mouth with his finger. Now the person doesn't use any of that. He uses his finger to clean his mouth. What about what's the situation like? There are three different opinions among the scholars of the Shafi'i school of thought. May Allah have mercy on them. So now we're talking about what is it in terms of reward. Can you, you're using your finger. He says, within the Shafi'i Madhab, there's three. And Imam al is a, a Shafi'i. Now, The most popular of these opinions is that it is not adequate to clean one's mouth with one's fingers. So one shouldn't. The second opinion is that it is adequate in, in any case. And the third is that... Second it's opinion is that he should, and he can. And, he, and the third one is... And the third is that it is acceptable only in the absence of any other more appropriate means. So the third one is that he should use a siwak, but if he can't find a siwak, he's then entitled to use his fingers. The reciter should use the siwak by starting from the right side of his mouth to the left. The, he should, so he should start with what? The, this is only when it's what? Hmm? No. It's the only time you have to start from the right is when? Huh? Uh, if you're doing it ittiba'a li sunnah, but if you're doing it to clean your mouth from dirt, then the dirt you always start with the left. Because the Prophet said, always used to do good things with his right. Sah? Huh? When you go to the toilet and you do, you, you do your 
you see which with what with hand? Your left hand. So when you're doing it the first time and you're brushing your teeth the first time from dirt, then you start with the left. But if you're doing it not because your mouth is not clean, but you're doing it itiba'a li sunnah, you're doing it to follow the sunnah, then in this situation what do you do? Huh? Now, you start with your right now. Because so here, the person here is doing it should have brushed his teeth before, even if he has brushed his teeth before, when he's using the siwak here, is for what? It's for sunnah. Naam. So the reciter should use the siwak by starting from the right side of his mouth to the left, and he should form the intention of adherence to the sunnah. You see? So he's doing it in adherence to the sunnah. And following the sunnah is something good. And it's something that you're now not cleaning your mouth from it. So in this regard, it is what? It's from the right. Naam. Some scholars have stated that he should say, Oh Allah, bless this action for me while using the siwa. Some scholars, they said that he says this dua, Allahumma barik li fihi ya arhamar rahimin. Oh Allah, bless, bless it for me the most merciful, O oh my Lord. Again, this is a ibadah and a ibadah needs a... This is a ibadah and a ibadah needs what? It needs a evidence and it needs a nas, textual evidence. So we say that this is not uh, is permissible because there's no evidence for it. al one of the companions of Imam Shafi'i, he states, it is recommended that both the front and back of the teeth be clean and that the stick be moved along the edges of one's teeth, one's molars, and smoothly along the top of one's throat. So here, al mawardi ya ikhwati al-khiram, our ulama, explain everything, even how to brush your teeth and how to do it. So, and that's not something shocking because even the same thing has been transmitted from who? The Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam. The same was transmitted from him. Narrations have mentioned that he would brush his teeth sallallahu alayhi wasalam so much so until he would say ur, ur. The narration mentions. So, So the Prophet would do that. So these are the narrations that they brought and the understanding is that, that the person, he does the outside of his teeth and he does the inside of his teeth, inside as well. And also, once he has done that, so he's, he's done his incisors, he's done his molars, he's done his canines, huh? everything, he sorts it all out. Then, وَسَقْفِ حَلْقِهِ He also does that up to the saqaf of his teeth imrarar rafiqa like very nicely slowly and with the as they say the roof is connected the tongue with the both of them is connected the tongue all of them and it is from the saqaf and the tongue where the odor comes from the person does a brush now the scholars have also stated that one must use a stick of average length and one that is neither too dry nor too wet. So look, the length shouldn't be too long. No. Shouldn't be too short. No. It also shouldn't be excessively dry. And it also shouldn't be excessively what? Wet. So it shouldn't be shadidul yubusa. Shouldn't be yabis. And it also shouldn't be شديد الربوط الرطوبة رطوبة means what? wet should it be excessively wet as well if it is too dry it's maybe moistened with water so if the person feels like the, okay this is a hard one you go to a family they give you a hard one they've kept in the fridge you see or they've kept it for months then what you do here in this regard is you try to wet it لَيَّنَهُ بِالْمَاءِ take water and wet it. It is also acceptable that someone else's siwak be used with their permission. Also, you can use somebody else's siwak if they give you the permission to use it. Would I suggest somebody to use somebody else's siwak? Not at all. 
But can it be done if you both feel comfortable with each other? You could, you could do so if you wish to. But I think everybody should have their own. They should get their own one. It is disliked that the reciter recite the Qur'an if his mouth is bleeding or contains any kind of impurity without cleaning it first. So the author here says the person's mouth is bleeding. For them to go and read Qur'an whilst there's blood in their mouth, you see, for you know, yukra, this is disliked. Ah, this is disliked. Doing this so, you go and rinse out your mouth. As to whether or not reading this state is actually forbidden, Riyani, another of the companions of Imam al-Shafi'i, stated that there were two opinions regarding this. Is it haram? We, he said he mentioned that it's disliked. But is it haram? He says, Qala al-Rawyani. Rawyani means Ashab al-Shafi'i. He's from the Shafi'i scholars. He mentions from his father, Yahtamilu wajhaini. Both are possible. Sometimes it can even be haram and sometimes it can be makruh. Fasrun. Fi hukmi qira'ati al-Qur'ani bi ghayri tahara. ويستحب أن يقرأ وهو على طهارة فإن قرأ محدثا جاز بإجماع المسلمين والأحاديث فيه كثيرة معروفة قال الإمام الحرمين رحمه الله ولا يقال ارتكب مكروها بل هو تارك الأفضل فإن لم يجد الماء تيمم والمستحاضة في الزمن المحكوم بأنه طهر حكمها حكم المحدث وأما الجنب والحائض فإنه يحرم عليهما قراءة القرآن فإنه يحرم عليهما قراءة القرآن سواء كان آية أو أقل منها ويجوز لهما إجزاء القرآن على قلوبهما من غير تلفظ به ويجوز لهما النظر في المصحف وإمراره على القلب وأجمع المسلمون على جواز التسبيح والتهليل والتحميد والتكبير والصلاة على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وغير ذلك من الأذكار للجنوب والحائض قال أصحابنا وكذا إذا قال, إذا قال للإنسان خذ الكتاب بقوة وقصد به غير القرآن فهو جائز وكذا ما أشبه قالوا ويجوز له ما يقول عند المصيبة إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون إذا لم يقصدا القراءة قال أصحابنا الخراسانيون قال أصحابنا الخراسانيون ويجوز أن يقولا عند ركوب الدابة سبحان الذي سخر لنا هذا وما كنا له مقرنين وعند الدعاء ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار إذا لم يقصد به القرآن قال إمام الحرمين فإن قال الجنب بسم الله أو الحمد لله فإن قصد القراءة عصى وإن قصد الذكر أو لم يقصد شيئا لم يأثم ويجوز لهما قراءة ما نسخت تلاوة كالشيخ والشيخة إذا زنيا فارجموهما Section The ruling of reciting the Quran without being in a state of purity The author now goes into a mas'ala called Are you allowed? Are you permitted? To recite the Quran without purification I am not in a state of tahara Am I allowed to read the Quran? The author here says It is recommended that the reciter recite the Quran while in a state of purity So here he says well, used to have. It is recommended that the person reads the Quran in a state of tahara If he reads it but there is nothing wrong with reciting without having made ablution according to the consensus of the scholars. 
But if he reads it muhdithan, which is that he's got minor impurity, jaza it is permissible bi ijma'il muslimina by consensus of the Muslims, wal ahadithu fihi kathiratul ma'rufa. And the evidences pertaining to that are excessive, a large in quantity, and it's well known. There are many hadith to prove this point. Regarding he who recites without having made ablution, the Imam of Al Haramain states, it should not be said that he has done that which is disliked, rather, he has left that which is recommended, i.e., making ablution. Imam Al Haramain, Abu Ma'ali Al Juwaini, rahimahullah, from Ma'imati Shafi'iya, and he's going to quote him a lot because he's a Shafi'i, and so is Nawi a Shafi'i. So, Al Imam Al Haramain, Abu Ma'ali Al Juwaini, rahimahullah, is a book, big book in the Madhab Al Shafi'iya, it's called. نهاية المطلب في دراية المذهب. It's a book that's reached his 30 volumes. He wrote. And Imam al-Haramain is the author of al-Waraqat. He's the author of. He's the author of al-Waraqat. He's the one who authored that book, al-Waraqat. And then Imam al-Haramain, رحمه الله, he says, ولا يقال ارتكب مكروها. You can't say this person has done a makruh. بل هو تارك للأفضل. But this person has left what is virtuous. It's not makruh he did. But he left off what was very virtuous. He could have got a lot of reward for. Now, if the reciter cannot find water, he should make tayammum. So if what about if he can't find water? Abu Ma'ali al-Juwaini says tayammum. He does tayammum. And a woman who has passed her typical period of menstruation but still sees blood should cleanse herself, perform ablution, and then recite. The woman now is mustahada. Mustahada is, are you with me? And mustahada is called continual bleeding. It's when the woman just consistently is bleeding. There's no stopping to it. It's not menses. Huh? The woman has three types of blood that come from her. The first one is hail which is menstruation. The second one is called nifas, which is a postnatal bleeding. And the third one, which is istihada, which basically is continual bleeding. Continual bleeding, which is that her body is, is uh, producing blood that's unnecessary, has no reason. The Prophet told us, alayhi so the reason that's bringing it. But, this is called istihada. So what does this woman do when she wants to read the Quran? The woman who's in a state of istihada, the Shaykh says, Al-Imam Al-Haramain, Wal-Mustahadatu fi zaman al-Mahkumi. While she's in that period, which she said that she's, she's the, the woman who has istihada, can she have intimacy with her husband? No, she can. Mustahada, istihada. The woman who's consistently bleeding, she can. She's normal. This blood is not higher. You see, she just, they just need to know the difference between when it turns into higher. And there are ways that scholars verify that. There's a zaman called zamanul mahkum, they call it, fuqaha. Zamanul mahkum is the time where she is said to be pure. And that's the time that she's not on her menses. Does that make sense? That the istihada here is just that continuous bleeding. It's not menses here. That continual bleeding, while she's on it, she's pure. She's allowed to do what? Everything. There's nothing she stops from doing. You see? Because this blood, blood will never stop. It will never stop. But the author, Imam al Haramain, says even that though she's pure, she takes the hukum of a muhdith, which is that a person who lost what? Tahara, like you know, if a person passes wind or goes to the toilet, what do they do? They need to come with wudu, right? She say he he say that she's pure, but she needs to come with wudu. Ah, she needs to come with wudu. Now, those in the state of major ritual impurity, such as after having had intercourse and menstruating women, must neither recite the Quran nor touch it. The woman who's wa amal junubu wal haid. The woman who's on janaba, she's in a state of janaba. 
he's in a state of janaba. Janaba means after sexual intercourse. The state that the people are in is called janaba. Or if a guy has a wet dream or a woman has a wet dream. Or, this is called what? This is called it's a state of janaba. Well, ha'id, ha'id is menses. Those are called major impurity. When you have to come with wudu, it's called minor impurity. But when you have to come with ghusl, it's called what? Major impurity. He spoke about what? The minor impurity. What did he say that the minor impurity is? Is that that person has left the... Yeah? He has left the tariqatul afdal, the minor impurity. When you're in a minor impurity, reading the Quran, what did he say? You've left the what? You've left to a tariqul afdal. Sah? Are you with me, brothers? But what about if the person is in major impurity? Either by being in a state of janaba or a state of hayr. The author here says, فَإِنَّهُ يَحْرُمُ عَلَيْهِمَا قِرَاءَةَ الْقُرْآنِ Here is haram for them to read the Qur'an. He says it's what? He says it's haram. Are you? Regardless of whether it is a single verse or less. So he can't even say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. He can't say anything. That's if you take Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim as to be an ayah. Are you there? He can't read anything from the Qur'an. He can't. Are you? Instead, they are allowed only to recite it in their hearts without uttering its words. So they can say Bismillah in their heart. They can read everything in their heart, but they can't say anything. Are you? It is also permissible for them to read from it without uttering its words. So they can look at the Mus'haf. Are they allowed to touch it? Of course, for, of course according to them, no. Sah? So she's not allowed to touch the Mus'haf. Are you? The scholars are unanimously agree that it is permissible for the menstruating women and those in the state of major ritual impurity to glorify their Lord by saying the, by saying the takbir, to say Allah Akbar, and takbir, to say la ilaha illallah, to supplicate and make salat and salam or pray to the prophets of Allah who are So she's allowed to do, and he's allowed to do the one in the state of Janaba. All of them are allowed to do what is known as a tasbih, subhanallah, subhanallah, subhanallah. They do tahleel, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha tahmeed, alhamdulillah, rabbi, they do it. Takbir, Allah, they do all of that. Wa salatu ala rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sending salutation on the Prophet alayhi salatu sallam. Wa ghayri dhalika bil al-athkar. And all the other athkar there is, he does it. The junub and the ha'idh. Naam. Yes. 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 Yes